German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has announced 600 million euros in new military aid for Ukraine. Scholz was speaking with Volodymyr Zelensky here in Berlin as the Ukrainian president tours European capitals in an effort to secure more money and weapons for the war with Russia. Scholz said the aid was a message to Russia's Vladimir Putin that the West would not let up in its support for, U for Kyiv. He added that Germany and its partners would deliver a further 1.4 billion euros in new military assistance to Ukraine by the end of the year. Now let's get more now from DW's chief political editor, Michaela Kuftna. She's following Volodymyr Zelensky's visit here in Berlin. And in Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital, DW correspondent Nick Conley. Michaela, let's start with you. Zelensky said this is his most important meeting with Chancellor Schultz this year. Is he likely to get what he came for? Not exactly what he came for. Um, what he initially wanted to come for is a meeting that is actually hosted by U.S. President Joe Biden, his uh, biggest supporter. And Germany, in person of Olaf Scholz, is Ukraine's second largest supporter. So what he did get from him is the assurance that that would continue to stay that way. Um, and Vladimir Zelensky, of course, is uh, grateful to receive more assistance in shape of 600 million euros worth there. But what is missing is what he's most likely asking for in his so-called victory plan. And that is the kind of backing that, as he put it, would force Russia into negotiations for peace. Clearly, um, he hinted that demonstrating strength for him is the only path to actually get Vladimir Putin to react and potentially come to the table uh, at a second peace conference that everybody's talking about and that Vladimir Zelensky would see happen. So he got a bit of what he wanted, but not quite the same size as he'd hoped for. Nick in Kyiv. Zelensky said he would be presenting his plan to end the war with Russia to Schultz. What do we know about the contents of that much touted plan? Well, Terry, this is obviously all pretty uh, closely guarded secret for now. There have been lots of leaks, lots of briefings but it is still far from being published and maybe if it is ever published lots of changes will have happened since you know the moment we're talking about it now uh, we understand that it focuses around permissions and supplies for western long range weapons to attack targets in russia far beyond the front lines and russia's borders to try and up the price of this war for vladimir putin and make it more difficult for his army to fight here in ukraine we've already seen what impact that permission has had since ukraine has been able to basically protect kharkiv by attacking regions just behind the border in russia with western weapons that has really taken a lot of the pressure off kharkiv uh, and then secondly this is the kind of offer from the ukrainian side that if you give us uh, security guarantees uh, basically you know implied only for the territory that ukraine currently controls not its entire internationally recognized territory then that could be uh, the condition for some kind of ceasefire now you know we have seen time and time again lots of uh, different opinions within NATO, unwillingness to go there, even if uh, there was going to be a ceasefire before this kind of guarantees were extended, uh, questions of bilateral guarantees of the kind that the US has with Japan, say, or other nations. So lots of things on the table here, but a kind of, from a Ukrainian perspective, a more nuanced position saying, look, we're not expecting you to fight for, on our side to regain territory that Russia currently controls. Michaela, Chancellor Schultz once again underlined Germany's support for Ukraine in his statement just before they met, uh, with, before he met with Zelensky. Is there any sign of a shift in tone in how far that support will go, or is it looking rock solid? Well, rock solid in the terms that have been laid down before, which is that uh, Germany will stand by Ukraine basically for as long as it takes. What is slightly new is the nuance of that it will maintain being the second largest supporter of Ukraine. Now, that could fast change depending on dynamics in the United States, how much support continues to come from the biggest supporter. Um, so he's not willing and... Um, 
Volodymyr Zelensky is no longer publicly asking for longer range weapons from Germany, namely the Taurus system. And this is where internal politics, domestic politics plays out here in Germany. What has been built as a cautious approach by the German Chancellor is pretty much the only issue that sees him get some positive traction in opinion polls and in those ratings. And if anything, it's a demonstration that domestic politics always plays a large role in commitments towards Ukraine with growing skepticism here and a ruthless campaign in the United States leading up to the November 5th elections. We're already seeing Donald Trump put support for Ukraine uh, as something that uh, could take away from victims of those raging storms over there. So uh, this is the kind of climate Volodymyr Zelensky finds himself in and therefore he's very grateful to get the assurances that he got here from the German Chancellor. But that doesn't really amount to the kind of demonstration of strength towards Vladimir uh, Putin he'd been hoping for. Mikaela, thank you very much. That was our chief political editor, Mikaela, here in, uh, Mikaela Kovna here in Berlin, and DW's Nick Conley in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. Let's bring in Domitilia Sagramoso. She's an expert on Russian foreign and security policy at the Department of War Studies in King's College, London. Domitilia, good to see you again. Now, Volodymyr Zelensky was supposed to be attending a Ukraine summit hosted by U.S. President Joe Biden. But he ended up on this whirlwind tour meeting European leaders. What kind of signal does that send to Russia? Well, I think the reason why this uh, Rammstein meeting was cancelled was actually because of the hurricane in Florida and the United States. So we can't consider this as a decision not to support Ukraine. On the contrary, I think when uh, Zelensky was in the United States, President Biden extended additional aid to Ukraine uh, in the military front. And, uh, and so I think that also his efforts to garner support uh, within Europe uh, have not been in vain. Of course, uh, the question about uh, allowing uh, Ukraine to utilize uh, long-range uh, missiles uh, inside Russia is still uh, under discussion from what we know. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, as was being reported, uh, the German Chancellor promised additional military support uh, and continued sort of commitment to uh, the security and the defense of Ukraine. So I think it is not in vain uh, but of course, it might not be uh, as extensive as uh, maybe Ukraine had wished. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think that this shows that there isn't any support for Ukraine. Zelensky says he has a plan for victory. What could that look like? Well, I mean, nobody has seen really a detailed uh, outline of this plan, but we can sort of guess that it, it involves a variety of dimensions. Uh, most importantly, overall, there is a question about providing effective security guarantees to Ukraine uh, in the form, ideally, of NATO membership of, or something very similar to that. Uh, but more specifically, uh, the idea is to uh, develop a very targeted uh, plan uh, which has sort of realistic steps uh, that could move the situation forward uh, on the battlefield and then push uh, or put pressure on Russia to uh, reach a more favorable uh, negotiated agreement. Uh, part of it, of course, is additional military equipment, and as I mentioned, uh, the right to use long-range missiles to hit uh, strategic targets inside Russia, such as airfields, logistic hubs, transportation hubs, which could really have an impact because a lot of the uh, a lot of the um, uh, delivery of these very powerful weapons come from a very, very much inside Russia. Uh, there is also the question about providing additional financial and economic aid and then sort of creating the framework for an effective sort of peace uh, peace uh, negotiations or a, a sort of a peace summit. Uh, we don't know the details about uh, location. There is talk about this being held in November. Yeah. That's what Zelensky is saying, but we don't really know. You what, mentioned what negotiations. Really Sorry to moment. jump in there because this, this is something I want to pick up on. This is called a victory plan, right? But consensus is that sooner or later this, this war will end at the negotiating table. Now, is victory in the sense of winning this war really something Ukraine or its allies still believe in? at this point? 
Well, as all everybody is saying now, I mean, the question is, how do you define victory? And I think there are two uh, sort of levels. One uh, sort of more um, fundamental level is uh, the victory of Ukraine would represent the preservation of the Ukrainian state, maybe not in its 1991 borders, but nevertheless, that a substantial part of Ukraine remains independent, sovereign, and ideally anchored within what we call the Euro-Atlantic structure. So a member of the European Union and closely tied to Euro-Atlantic security structures. That as a plan of victory, I think, is a very important aspect and mm -hmm. is something that is probably part of it. A second level of victory would be the, uh, the sort of the dislodge of all Russian forces from Ukra Ukrainian territory. That, as we know, is much more difficult, would require a lot more military support, more massive mobilization of Ukrainians uh, within Ukraine, and it's probably a longer term project. But I think that what is interesting is when you're in Ukraine, I was there a couple of weeks ago, yeah. is there's very strong support for continuing with this fight.